Okay, we'll just give another few seconds for people to join in. Yeah. So we start. There's Gulam Bhai. <laughs> oh, hello, Gulam. Welcome everyone. JD Center of Art is delighted to collaborate with the India International Center for its Meet the Artist program. Amba Sanya, theater artist and costume de designer, is the guest for the 259th Meet the Artist and will speak on painter, sculptor, and educator, Babesh C. Sanya. In the talk, Amba Sanya will reminisce on her late father, the eminent artist and his experiences spanning over 100 years of his life. JDCA is envisioned as a unique art center that aims to preserve and exhibit its large collection of folk, tribal, traditional, and contemporary art, all under one roof. It is currently under construction in Bhubaneswar, Odisha. Meet the Artist is a permanent program of JDCA, where invited artists, craftspersons, or scholars share their work, experiences, and insights through an illustrated talk. Since 2001, 258 such Meet the Artists programs have taken place on the second Saturday of every month. Currently, our sessions are being held online. B.C. Sanyal. Born in Assam, B.C. Sanyal studied at the Government College of Art and Craft, Calcutta, under the renowned art historian, Percy Brown. He joined Mayo School of Arts, Lahore, now known as the National College of Arts. As a teacher in 1929, he was instrumental in setting up the Lahore College of Art in 1937, where he taught artists such as Satish Gujral, Pranath Mago, and many others. After the partition, he came back to Delhi and set up his base at 26 Gold Market. He also founded the Delhi Shilpa Chakra, a new platform for emerging artists and sculptors in India. In 1953, he joined the Department of Art, Delhi Polytechnic, and served as the vice chairman of the Lalit Kala Academy from 1960 to 69. It was during his tenure at the Academy that it held its first Triennale, now a permanent fixture. As an artist working with watercolors and oil paintings, his themes revolved around archetypal human struggles and deeply focused on the economically deprived. P.C. Sanyal was awarded the Padma Bhushan the Lalit Kala Academy Fellowship for Lifetime, and the Government of India issued a postage stamp to commemorate his birth centenary in 2000. Amba Sanyal, the speaker. Today, Amba Sanyal, theatre artist and costume designer, is a recipient of the Sangeet Natak Academy Award in 2008 for costume design. She was born in Delhi to B.C. Sanyal, noted painter, sculptor and art teacher, and Sneha Lataha Sanyal, a highly regarded actress and teacher of English. An alumni of the Delhi College of Art, Shantni Ketan Vishwabharti University, and Ecole de Beaux Arts at Paris, Amba Sanyal worked in several spheres, art education, craft design, and book illustration, before returning to the theater in the 1990s as a costume designer. Besides designing costumes for both theater and film, she has acted in productions by Habib Tanir, Ibrahim Alkazi, Amal Alana, and Sheila Bhatia, as well as appeared in films by Anand Gandhi and Sujay Ghosh. Incidentally, hopefully we'll have Amal Alana talking about Abraham al Qazi in three sessions from now, three or four sessions from now. So an expert in costumes and textiles, Amba Sanyal has also written and published their first iconic volume on sarees of Madhya Pradesh. Thank you, Amba, and thank you for having us. And over to you. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you, thank you. Uh, is it Jatin who's yeah. saying a few words? No, one word that I remember and recollect wonderful memories of Nizamuddin East. Yes. At one time, Nizamuddin East, West and Jangpura, where more than 200 artists, writers, poets, architects, uh, designers lived and musicians. You name whoever, Al Kazi was there, Pradosh Das Gupta, Shankucha Udri, Ramachandran, Paramjit, 
राम कुमार कृष्ण खन्ना डगर ब्रदर्स असद अली खान एंड मेनी ऑफ देम एंड I when I came from Bombay to Delhi I lived in Nizamuddin the East and I knew Bhavas Das from those days so it's been and we spent he and I um uh, although he's like my grandfather but I we were very good friends we went to many parties at the uh, embassies and uh, Lalit Kala etc I remember a beautiful moment in Lalit Kala at a meeting he will close his eyes and sit quietly on his turn he would say a uh, contemporary indian art is very temporary <laughs> in a, in a beautiful time please amba uh siddharth jatin and everybody i would i would first like to thank my uh collaborators in presenting this and they joy without him i would not have been able to put this thing together and of course katie for uh, keeping me going <laughs> and also being a critic <laughs> generally uh giving me the energy to work uh as well as siddharth himself because it is he who helped me to edit a little bit which i i i couldn't i couldn't edit it enough because there's so much to tell and so much to say that i found it very difficult so please i apologize in advance if it gets very boring <laughs> and long there is no chance <laughs> <laughs> it, it 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 could well be anyhow so this uh this uh, whole uh, uh thing of uh, about baba about this isanya is based entirely on on uh, his autobiography which is in two volumes and uh, uh, all the quotes are from his autobiography and very little of my own uh, observations the autobiography itself is in the form of flashbacks while he is carving the 6 foot high dolku stone and uh memories are coming back to him so it is not chronological necessarily but i have tried to put some chronology in it uh and also this is after he learned to uh carve stone this is about the only piece that he actually carved eventually and after much later after he learned to carve stone because he was very very versatile with with the uh, painting mediums and with the uh, with sculpture in in clay also on wood but stone was not a medium he had done too often and to my knowledge this is uh, perhaps the only one and he took on a huge 6 foot tall pool stone to be able to do it so it starts with the story of the vertical woman and i was asked why vertical woman the only answer i can find is that his his vision of the woman is a woman who stands on her own two feet there are many women that he has depicted who are in uh, are sitting but the main uh, narrative of his in his in his painting is that of the vertical woman standing on her own two feet and bearing the burdens of everybody around her so i'll quote from his uh, about what he has done about the work the narration of my story has met with quite a few intervals persuaded by friends i commenced writing first in bengali nearing completion friends again persuaded me to render the same into english aiming at a wider readership the amrita patrika a bengali literary weekly in calcutta took charge of the manuscript of uh, publishing chapters of their choice i had the manuscript withdrawn but in the process i discovered number of pages missing 
Later, a journalist friend dug out the manuscript from an obscure corner of my studio and began serializing the memoir in weekly installments in the Patriot. The Patriot went into liquidation. Some problem of finance, I believe, though the friend, however, was good enough to return the manuscript as well as the photographic reproductions of the bulk of my work. It has been more than 15 years now, and I have turned 92. Events have continued to take place in my little world though. So I fill up the gap. Down the memory lane, as I told you. So he quotes, Dhai Dhai, Thuk Thuk, Dhia Dhia, Thuk Thuk, long way off yet for the finishing sound of Thuk Thuk. Like the folly of a craze for writing at an old age is my venture at carving. From childhood, I had nursed a romantic attraction to sculpture. At the source was my memory of the clay figurines of Kali, Durga, Saraswati, and Ganesh that my mother shaped with her fingers for my amusement. Along uh, with his mother, his father was no more, and uncle, uh, uh, his, one of his father's brothers had looked after the family, and this was in Dibugar, and the uh, picture on the left of the wattle and dog, dog huts with thatch roof. That was the kind of environment he grew up in, in a compound which was run by the railway lines where they, where they were employed. Uh, his, fa his uncle used to run an akhada. So he's, he's brought up, he's grown up watching these bodies wrestling in the uh, akhada. He also ran the Durga Puja club. He also ran a jatra. So he has grown up with theater, but he also used to uh, uh, give for periodicals. He, uh, he used to bring the periodicals uh, where the Chatterjee's uh, picture album, the Modern Review, the Prabhashi, and uh, uh, these were the artists whom he saw in those manuals and so he was aware of the work of these artists. Um, eventually, of course, he had to go to college and the family decided that they would put him in the Serampur College and uh, with, where he did two years of chemistry, but he was bored and the teacher used to uh, a teacher used to note that, you know, he's just doodling in, in the copy book and not listening to his lectures. So he said, why don't you go and join an art school instead? So that puts the seed into his head and he goes in search of an art school. But in Sirapur itself, there was uh, this the, 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 uh, practice of taking a monthly railway pass. So all the males would mostly disappear in the daytime and there will be only women around during the day uh, on weekdays. But Sanya would borrow the railway pass and go to Calcutta, mostly to listen to the nationalist leaders who were helming the non-cooperation movement. And with his own ears, he has heard them talk and seen them with his eyes and has been part of the gathering that imbibed the, the sentiments that were risen by them. I'm sure you have seen the screen. After that, he uh, goes to the Government uh, School of Arts and Crafts, Calcutta, and uh, takes admission there where he is given two years exemption because he's already done two years at the Serampur College. So I don't understand the logic of that, but that is how it happened. And he gets to know the various principles who have been, gets to know about the various principles. And while he was there, Percy Brown was the principal. And uh, it just so happened that Percy Brown was uh, not uh, was not uh, uh, 
uh, available to all of them. Uh, and he was so busy writing his books. The other person, the vice principal was J.P. Ganguly, and he too was very busy. And Atul Bose was the only person who was close to the students. Uh, there was one another, Mr. Achari, who used to, who was a master craftsman, actually. Uh, it's uh, the students were unhappy. The students were unhappy because uh, because uh, they didn't, uh, they, they wanted the live uh, models to work from for the life study and not plastic casts, which were there all the time. And he, uh, then he, along with some other students, raised this point with the principal and the principal replied, well, if you want it for live uh, models, go and search for them yourself. So as a result, he and a friend of his uh, looked for models, male models they found, but female models they were not getting readily. Eventually, uh, they went to the red light area and after searching for a bit, they found one lady called Tilotama. And she started coming regularly as, a, as the female model. He says that even in a progressive institution like the Government School of Arts and Crafts, Calcutta, New plaster casts of Venus and Apollo were the limit. We had demanded nudes in flesh and blood for our life study class. As in that period, there was another uh, trend and that was started by the Indian Society of Oriental Arts which served an alternative model to the Western style training in the College of Art. And Abhinindranath Tagore, who was the person who had initiated that, uh, had a cohort of students. And uh, they were Asit Haldar, Rehman Chettai, Mukul De, Samarendranath Gupta, K. Venkatappa. And there, on the other hand, there were writers who, who wrote about art, who propagated this uh, uh, school of thought. There were people like Anandu Kumaraswamy, James Cousin, Rai Krishna Das, Osi Ganguly, G. Venkatachalam, and Stella Trambrish. In the way, while he was in the College of Art, he had made, he, his interest towards sculpture had increased and he had made this particular sculpture which he exhibited in the Calcutta Society of Fine Arts exhibition and had won uh, the gold medal for this. Uh, so what happened was uh, we were going through, uh, we were going through uh, some old vintage photographs and we found this photograph which had that model in the storeroom of the uh, the, 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 the government college of art. And it was surprising that it should still be around. The boudoir of Mrs. Percy Brown. Now this is a small story which I have to tell you. Uh, and uh, the story is that one day uh, there was a uh, the, the doorkeeper of Percy Brown came into their classroom and he said that uh, he said that uh, uh, you are uh, who plays the flute everybody pointed their fingers at, uh, at Sanya because he used to play the flute and not only that he knew how to make his own flute because uh, in Assam he had learned to do the same so he was taken to the boudoir of uh, Mrs. Percy Brown so I'll just read this up. Then one day the much exalted doorkeeper of uh, Principal Brown came to our studio class and demanded to know who played the flute in the classroom. I was fond of playing the flute. In the Sam I'd learned to play as well as make my own flutes from bamboo reeds. Classmates often asked me to play it during intervals. Fingers were pointed towards me. The turbaned and gold braided peon, I can just imagine that, asked me to follow him to Mrs. Brown's boudoir with my flute. When I arrived there, 
the surprise of surprises, there in her boudoir, I saw my own watercolors. And of course, I had to do a, a, a command performance at that time. After that, uh, uh, Sanya started uh, visiting the, the, doing watercolors at the English garden that Mrs. Brown used to maintain. And he loved the pond where the, the, the shadow of leaves falling in the water uh, invited him to do watercolors. It so also happens that uh, he says, I had the opportunity and privilege of peeping into the mind of Jamini Roy at a time when he was struggling to break away from the European tradition and from the training he had received at the art school at Charanti. In his early youth, I enjoyed his affection and friendship towards the end of my stay at the school. He invited me to his Bagbaz at home and uh, 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 Bagbaz at home and uh, they would play with clay together and fashioning imaginary forms and images. I saw before long how passionately he was exploring the simplification of form, which led to his unique stylization in painting. Indeed, he emerged as a master in the contemporary Indian painting. Another uh, episode is when Chitarandan Das dies and is martyred in the, uh, uh, in the movement, Gandhi, whom he was very close to, Gandhi came to, at his cremation, came for his cremation in Calcutta. And, it, and Sanyal observes something over there, which he narrates. He says, eventually, between these two schools of art that were competing with each other, Gradually, a kind of vulgar modernity wounded the public taste, which manifested itself in the works of our traditional image makers of Kumartuli, of Calcutta, and Krishnanagar. Durga Lakshmi Saraswati began to appear in the likenesses and attire of popular film stars. Goshtapal of Kumartuli modeled the head of Gandhi at the spot of the cremation ground, at the cremation of Chitananda Das at Kyuratola Ghat thereby providing a great impetus to the community of modelers of Kali Durga Kartik Mahadev to catch up with the realistic contemporary art. Now the next story is about his uh, confrontation with a gentleman named Mikhekap who was a Malayali but was, had lived in Malaysia and had come to the art college looking for a modeler to be able to use his magic formula to create gold and silver uh, casts. Sanyal is forwarded to him as being a person who, who could do that very well. And in the meanwhile, this J Jacob had taken permission from the curator of the, of, the, of the Victoria Memorial Museum that the, queen, the face of Queen Mary and King George could be uh, used for making gold and silver casts. Now for that, it meant that Sanyal had to go overnight, to stay overnight in the, in, in the Victoria Memorial and plaster their faces with this magic formula. He does that. And then when it is time to take the plaster off, which is supposed to come off like gelatin, it doesn't. You can imagine what he thought, what he should do. So he quickly runs down the ladder on which he was perched, goes to the Jokidar and asks him, tells him that he needs a bit of fresh air, gets out of the museum and disappears. He disappears enough for a few days, but when he comes back again to his mother's house, he finds Jacob is there. And Jacob is, uh, is arguing with him, look, it didn't work this time, it will work again. I'm telling you, I promise you it will work again. And he lures him again to Chandan Nagar to do busts of silver and gold busts of Napoleon this time. So they go off to Chandan Nagar and he makes a model of Napoleon. And when Trump comes to cast, Jacob is doing it himself. But it's somehow not working. Having had enough, Sanyal says, 
How gullible was I? I was thrilled with the rosy picture of wealth and prosperity that he presented me with. Just fancy, I who walked from Hatibagan to Ribbon Street to save a few paisa on the tramway fare may even drive a car before long. My hands would be full with commissions to execute statues of Rajas and Maharajas and all the national leaders, not to mention the big zamindars and merchants. But unfortunately, in this country, no statues are made while the person is living. Yet somehow, in a sort of vague and mysterious way, in the dark recesses of my mind, the Rajas and Maharajas began to die. And for the sake of the golden statues from the Jacob and Sanyal statuary works. But after Chandan, uh, uh, Chandan Nagar episode, he says, he decides to leave early in the morning. And he says, no sooner than the crows thawed at the crack of dawn had I been ready to depart and rolled up my bedding. I discovered my pillow was under Jacob's head, who was dead asleep. I placed, replaced the pillow with a round empty tin of Hubbock's plaster and slipped out of Hotel de Paris and hoped that after the silent and unceremonious departure, jo Jacob would never cross my path again. Well, that's another story that he didn't. Uh, he comes back to the College of Art. When he comes back to the College of Art, he finds Mukul Day is the principal who's just returned from London and is the first Indian principal to be appointed at the Government College of Art. But Mukul Day is not a very friendly person with the students. In fact, he has cut their, uh, 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 the amount that they used to get for uh, buying canvas and colors, and uh, the students are very angry with him, and they decide to go on a strike. A few days, and Sanya is friends with these students, though he's much older. So a few days later, he says, the clay modeling teacher, Chintamani Manna, came excitedly and told me, Bhavesh, rush upstairs. An angry batch of students are at the door of the principal's office. You are the senior most student. The students will listen to you. Try and pacify them. I rushed upstairs. At each landing, I glanced at the busts of Harold and Percy Brown and arrived breathless to address the students. My friends, oh, my friends, I said to them, all said and done, this is the first time in the history of the School of Art that we have an Indian principle, therefore, let our expression of protest be blended with due courtesy. Just at this point, Mukul Day opened the door and said, and, and said, you have come to beat me? Then strike me. And like a good Christian, he turned his cheek. It was a dramatic movement. Well, Bokul Day and Sanya did not uh, get along too well because he thought he was the leader of the students and that uh, he was his enemy. But of course, that was not true. All the same, the impression had been made. And one day there was a... Uh, 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 a letter from the Krishna Plaster Works in Lahore that they needed a modeler to make the plaster bust of Lala Lajpataya. Quickly, Mukul Day put him onto this task because this was good riddance and he would not be, have to confront each other. They would not have to confront each other after that. Sanyal makes the, makes the, uh, his preparations for leaving for Lahore. And during those preparations, some of his friends said, look, you carry a Pandit uh, suit, which he had had made much earlier for other reasons. And he says uh, that, uh, uh, and also carry a half pant and, uh, and go and uh, go in the third class of the European booty because that way uh, you won't be, it won't be so crowded but you will not be accepted in a dhoti and a kutta. Sanya thinks about this dhoti kutta and they said it's cold over there, so you better uh, be prepared. But Sanya remembers that once he had gone to Nenital and uh, when he had arrived at the hotel, uh, it, it was run by, by uh, a gentleman named Ganguly and he, he was given a room, but he says, 
I was given a mattress and a blanket. I was hesitant to use them as I thought they were, thought they were not clean enough and stretched myself in the bed as straight as a rice pounder. Very soon I bent on my, my, my side like the bow of a hunter. Next, I curled up like a dog and soon enough, completely turned myself into a bundle of the banya. In the meantime, of course, I pulled everything within my reach on me, the cushions, the gari, parda, all except the furniture, and prayed to Nena Devi that the sun would rise earlier than usual. It just so happened that on his, when the day he is leaving for Lahore, he reads in the newspaper that there appeared some advertisements and posters declaring the opening of Jacob's statuary works at the Grand Hotel in Calcutta. I was shocked and surprised with the news and positively felt deprived. Had he really succeeded at last? So he goes via that Grand Hotel and he goes up into where the pointer is that it's on the first floor. Instead of people, other people, normal people, he finds a whole lot of red turbans. And he asks, where is this Jacob? He asks of them. He says, do you know him? He says, Sir, no. And they say that he is to be arrested. We are here to arrest him for that travesty at the Victoria Memorial. He leaves for, Bihar, for, for uh, Lahore and uh, when he arrives over there, the exterior of the Lahore railway station was designed like a fortress in Islamic architecture, but it was in reality neither Mughal nor Pathan, but inspired by the British Railway Company as a token of aesthetic appreciation of the merchant class. Having seen the Bachai Mosque and the Mausoleum of Jahangir and the Suneheri Mosque later, the railway station architecture seemed positively ugly. There seemed to be, he, when he comes out of the railway station, he, 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 there is a whole lot of uh, uh, quarrel amongst the Tong, Tonga, uh, Tonga Wallas, but he finally catches a Tonga. And they see, he talks about the Tonga Wala. And he says, there seemed to be an exuberance of life force that could not be contained. The final touch was provided by my charioteer, who adjusted his rickety horse and with every stroke of his whip, calling in names, using the choices for vocabulary in his repertoire, tracing the ancestry of its mother and describing the adultery the Tonga driver himself committed with the mother of the poor horse. Well, he went to the Kalibadi from there where he refreshed himself. And then there was this major decision, should he wear the Palm Beach suit or should he wear his Kutta pajama? He decides on the suit and proceeds to the uh, Krishna Plaster Works address. Over there, he is taken to the roof of the building and told that this is the place where he will, this is the room where he will stay. To his horror, next to the room was the toilet. And uh, it seems that in those days, Lahore didn't have drainage of any kind. And so all the toilets used to be located on the, on the terrace. It was terrible, but he, were, he, he had to adjust, so he adjusted. And then he was taken to the residence of the Panditji who owned the plaster works and given the living room to prepare the, the, the bust of Lala Lajpat Rai. That room had a whole, whole lot of cupboards with the skeletons and body parts and all that in plaster, plaster of Paris, because that was his uh, uh, everyday uh, meal for Panditji, where it was used in colleges and schools. He then has gone, uh, this, this particular painting of the Anarkali Bazaar, where he goes in search of a cup of tea because he's told that he can, he's, he's, for breakfast, he has to have a big glass of the sea. And then at night, he has to have roti. In between, he has to work throughout. He wants his, his, his cup of tea. That is what he craves for. So he explores the Narkali Bazaar. And this painting was sent to me by Ajaz Anwar, who has painted it recently from Lahore. And during that, he finds a, a, a restaurant called, called Kailash Restaurant, where he goes often for his cup of tea. 
while all this is happening and he is making the Lala Lashpa riot bust, there is there are riots in the in the communal riots in Lahore because one Hindu gentleman had translated uh, a naughty book called Rasila Rasul and uh, with which about which the Muslims were very angry and there, the, a full scale riot had broken out. In that explosive atmosphere, says Sanya, the self-sacrifice and daring, acha, okay. in, 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 okay, sorry, there is, at that time, Inspector Sanders, Saunders had his office at the police station. The moment he came out of his office, he fell flat on the ground with a bullet in him. The shooter had disappeared. Saunders was the man who had struck the fatal blow on Lajpat Rai, and he was hated in any case. And after an interval of only a few days, there was more sensational news. At the assembly session in Delhi, a bomb was thrown, followed by a rain of revolutionary pamphlets. Bhagat Singh and Batuk Dutt were arrested. Jatin Das and Ajoy Bush were taken prisoners in the so-called Lahore conspiracy case. In that explosive atmosphere of the time, the self-sacrifice and daring deeds of the revolutionary and, and the anarchists transformed the otherwise placid nature of the people. In spite of the stagnant polit political situation in the country, a vast number of Indians shared the zeal of the freedom fighters. Sanyal says, I no longer felt so lonely in Lahore. In the second act of this tragic drama, Patriot Bhagat Singh took the noose round his neck with a song and a smile on his lips, and Jatin Das had died in the prison. At last, the uh, bust of Lala Lajpat Rai is finished, but he needs eyes that have known uh, Lala Lajpat Rai to have a look at the bust. And the physician of Lala Lajpat Rai is one, and the son of Lala Lajpat Rai, who just returned from America, is the other, and they have proved the model. But what happens is that uh, he doesn't get paid. And when he doesn't get paid, he, he tells them that, you know, you should be paying me. They say, it doesn't matter, you're a young boy. You make another model of a, of a very well-known sannyasi and you'll get paid. He starts the model of the sannyasi, but he realizes that there is no payment coming to him. So he, has a he 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 just leaves that Krishna festival and uh, finds a very cheap hotel for himself called the Hazara Hindu Hotel where the only op occupation was of a char pai on the terrace of the hotel. But there he makes some friends, uh, two Kashmiri boys called Rana and Mukti, and they, on learning uh, about his predicament, suggested that the male school of arts should be the proper place for him to be in. And why shouldn't he pay a visit to the school? But they warned him that the principal of Mr. Um, uh, um, the principal, Mr. Lionel Heath, would not be over pleased to receive him in Khadi. So wearing his suit, he goes to visit Lionel Heath. Lionel Heath shows him around the whole college. And then just as they are leaving, he is leaving, he suddenly Sanyal turns around and asks Lionel Heath, what about a sitting? How about a few sittings? I venture to ask him, he says. He seemed to be a little embarrassed, this is Lionel Heath, and call it what attracts you to my head. I'm not handsome, nor am I able to pay you for your trouble. Sanya says, I said the question of payment did not arise. I had remained idle for some time, artistically speaking, and the action would be rewarding in itself, I would love to model his head. And that is what I did. But I had to wait till the return of Samarendranath Gupta from London, who had been training at the Rothenstein studio, and who was going to be the principal of the College of Art on the retirement of Lionel Heath. Samarendranath appoints him as teacher at the, at, at the Muir School of Art.
then there is this thing about Sanya, the brown side, turning into the brown side. There were two different worlds, he says, old and new. Gualmandi and Christian Plaster works on the one hand, and the mall and the Mayo School of Arts on the other. I entered a different phase and a new chapter of my life. If the old and all it represented was not entirely forsaken within myself, the new asserted itself in the way of life with a measure of urgency, at least outwardly. This is his meeting with a person whom he has had a lifelong friendship with, Nora Richards. He says, I had seen her once floating like an autumn cloud in the corridors of the Mayo School of Arts, a fragile old woman in white. Indeed, she looked more like a phantom than a real person with her white curls down draped from head to foot in white muslin brushing the ground. Deep set, bright blue eyes and the curved pointed nose marked her out as of uncommon clay. This was the beginning of the long stretch of friendship till she passed away at the age of 94 in 1970. She was a theater person. She was a painter. She was into Tolstoyan way of thinking and she was running a society called the Shakespearean Society in Lahore. Eventually, uh, Sanya ends up making a bust of her as well. When in the Mayo School of Arts, Sanya had introduced live model classes and outdoor landscape paintings and watercolors. Many more students, including ladies of upper and middle class homes, joined the school. There was one very well-known Gama Pahelwan. He was known all over the country, actually. He, he uh, asked, um, requested him if he, if he would uh, be a model in the school. And he was the first model from outside school. His life-size sculpture in clay of Gama Pahelwan, which he had made uh, as an inspiration from, from the looks of Gama Pahelwan, was sent for an exhibition in Calcutta after it had done many rounds in, uh, in Lahore itself and been much appreciated. The, 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 the sculpture goes to Calcutta, but it never comes back. He called it despair. Also despair was of his unfulfilled affair with the daughter of principal, with the principal of the school, because of which eventually he left the school, apart from other reasons as well. He says after leaving the school, an artist has to feel free to explore, examine, question and experiment before he has arrived. This is only possible if he is free from the pressure of seeking employment for economic sustenance. Though the pressure was relentless, the circumstances were such that I had to dig my feet in and carry on. I have never been a prolific producer of works and I'm rather lazy by temperament and given to making many paintings and many sculptures mentally in my imagination rather than actually rendering them on canvas or in three dimensions. But now I began to enjoy painting in my own fashion and deviated from the beaten track. After he has uh, uh, gone around uh, looking for a studio for himself, he finally finds a studio uh, in the basement of the Dayal Singh Brid, uh, building. And there, this is a picture of his first uh, uh, exhibition at the building and very well-known faces can be seen in this particular. That, that place then becomes uh, a place for the artists of, uh, of Lahore to visit whom he had been in touch with in earlier as well. But then this becomes the place, the place where they all meet. Chiktai, Alabaksh, Thakur Singh, Parashar, Halbevan Petman, Anna Molka, Razia Sirajuddin, Badir Prashad Shinglu, Rup Krishna, Mary Krishna, and Abdul Aziz, who was from Mysore but settled in Lahore, 
Sheikh Hamid, who was the husband of Anna Mulka, and Mia Muhammad Hussein. Another extension to the community of artists was the second wave, wave of people who settled in Lahore. Amongst them were Amrita Shergir, Charles Fabri, and Baldun Dhingra, who brought about another layer of awareness, Sanya feels, in the artist community there. The uh, artists who frequented his, uh, his studio and exhibited several times was Sudhir Khastagi, Paritosh Sen, and Kanwar Krishna. But his place becomes an actor. People of all callings start dropping in at his place, holding meetings there, meeting each other there. Amongst them was a Joy Ghosh, political people, Narendra Sharma, the dancer, BPL Frida Bedi, Ravi Shankar, Fez Ahmed Fez, Uday Shankar, Hafiz Jalandri, and the Indian People's Theatre Association, ITTA, used to hold their meetings over there. The students who were at his school and who became very well known painters later or artists later was Dhanraj Bhagat, Pranath Mago, Damyanti Chawla, Amarnath Sehgal, Satish Kujral, Anwar Ali, Harkrishan Lal, Krishna, uh, Krishan Khanna, Swatantrata, Bhagat. And also, of course, Ratna Fabri, Asghari, uh, Asdiri Kadar, Tofail Ahmad, and Premaja Chaudhary. He was very fond of music, and that is what was his uh, uh, relief from other, other activities. Uh, he already was playing the Israj and the flute, but later on, he even learned to play the sitar when he came to Delhi, much later in life. The Regal Studio, this is a uh, vintage uh, uh, photograph of the Regal Studio on the left, and what I received very uh, uh, recently from Ajaz Anwar, is that this studio is up for demolition now. He says that I left the Literary League premises and rented the dance hall of the Regal Cinema Building, situated very conveniently at the triangular junction of the Mall Road, Hall Road, and the Temple Road. It was a neat place with adequate space and lighting, I began to concentrate on work happily, notwithstanding the difficulties of the times. These are the exhibitions, some of the exhibitions that were held in his regal studio as well. In this period, he makes the acquaintance of the fabulous Mirnalini Chato Padhyay, also called Choti Mami, fondly by all the people. She, Mirnalini, was the uh, principal of the uh, uh, Sarganga Ram, uh, Sarganga Ram uh, uh, School of, of, of uh, uh, Training and High School of Girls. Okay, sorry for that. Uh, she is of the family where the four sisters, her elder sister was Sarojini Naidu, the famous poetess. Her younger sister was Suhasini uh, uh, Nambiar, who became Suhasini Nambiar, who was a committed communist and was uh, uh, of, of whom he, uh, Sanyal had also made a portrait. Mirnalini was the driving force behind uh, the, the, the uh, activities um, or rather activization of the students who went through her to, under her roof and who joined the leftist movement in Lahore. There is leftism in the air, he says. 
at a meeting of the Renaissance Club one day, taking advantage of my presence, members initiated a discussion on socialist realism in art. In the phraseology of art, this was then a new art point, and we were not very familiar with the new theory of art and not prepared to debate in depth. But terms like people's art vis-a-vis -vis bourgeois art began to float about in the art circles. Amrita Shegel, who had uh, come to Lahore and was uh, living in Lahore, had arrived on the scene in Lahore with a fabulous exhibition in Faletti's Hotel organized by Barbara O'Keel. She had an immense effect on the artistic environment. She developed a close friendship with Sanya and held an exhibition in his studio as well. He helped to put her retrospective at her death at the, at the Punjab League, literally League. He writes about the death of Amrita. The untimely passing away of Amrita at the prime of her life robbed modern Indian art of a vitally meaningful contribution. I attended the sad cremation on the bank of the Ravi and later attended the condolence meeting at the Literary League. Chuktai, Ru, and Mary, and many of her admirers were present. We all felt that in her condensed artistic creations, she had obtained immortality. Her husband brought to me all her unused color tubes for disposal, as well as a paint box and two palettes. The palettes bore the evidence of her color scheme and arrangement. Very fondly, I preserved the palettes for some years, but alas, in the partition catastrophe, I lost the palettes along with all my worldly possessions, paintings, sculptures, and all. He suddenly has a craving to learn stone carving. He takes a six month leave and goes to JJ School of Art uh, during the, uh, uh, during the Quit India, uh, uh, no, in Quit India agitation in 1942. He works with Master Kimji, the carving teacher who was from Katiawar and who supervised his work at the ready workshop of the art school. There were some uh, uh, instruments for carving which he didn't have, but which the wife of the principal uh, had. And he, uh, when he goes to uh, request her to give those uh, instruments, she, she readily gives it. And he also learns that she was, she's a sculptor and she was the student of Epstein. But then traveling is his way of being. And he decides that he wants to go traveling in the South. And while I found these sketches from his old sketchbooks, he goes from, uh, go to, goes to Bombay, buys a, a round railway pass and go, goes from all the caves, Ajanta to, to Elephanta, et cetera, and then lands up in, in uh, Hyderabad where Sarojin Naidu has been waiting for him and he out of shyness had not gone to her. But when he did, she scolds him and says that I have made a provision for you to go and see the Salajan Museum and its artifacts, which is not open to public. I had to make, make special, get special permission for you to go there. He feels very ashamed and then he goes to, the, uh, to view all the artifacts of the Salajan Museum. And in that, uh, uh, he is amazed by what on. He sees. In, uh, he, over there, he had to take a train from Pamban to Dhanushkoti, but loses the ticket. So the station master in, in, in Pamban says, you go to the next railway station, take this bullock cart and catch the train and buy a new ticket. He does that. But as he uh, uh, gets into the train, another bullock cart is chasing and coming with a red flag. And it turns out that his ticket was found on the ground and the station master had sent it to the second bullet. Uh, and when he returns to Bombay, eventually, his very close friends, uh, uh, Sashi and Sushila Gore, have made uh, arrangements for an, of an astrologer to find out when he's getting married. And they say, it's time you get married. The astrologer says, 
there's only a small window. If you want to get married, you better do it now. So he rushes back to, when he rushes back to Lahore, Manalini Chattopadhyay also thinks the same. And she says, your good friend, Snegla Tasanya, could be a very good partner for you. Sanya agrees. And it is Brinalini who arranges for them to get married. But they don't have a house to live in. So Sanya, uh, Snegla stays separately in the hostel. And he stays in his digs. Eventually, a very close friend of his, uh, Khanna's, he uh, he has a haveli and in his haveli's outhouse, he builds a flat for them to stay in and that becomes the home of Sanya. Let me take you, rush you through some of his artworks. He had taken to wearing a smock for making the sculpture too, so that his suit doesn't get spoiled. This is the cobbler who was sitting at the base of the legal studio uh, staircase. Rashid Ahmed was the uh, director of All India Radio, and this was printed as a card. Sohasini Nambiar, whom he paints, paints uh, when she is in the world, who is a very close friend of Mark Sutung as well. This was a little boy attendant who used to be helping in the studio before he got married. And after he got married, uh, as it ha happens often, a bachelor's uh, uh, help all doesn't fit in. And so he left. It was very often that there would be child, bride, uh, child brides in those times, and he's painted one. Haldan girl, this is again, his affiliation uh, with the left movement made him sensitive about this matter. He had gone in uh, 43 to Calcutta and that was the time of the famine. And this is the picture he made at that time. He comes back to Lahore, he continues painting the everyday domestic domesticity of women in their homes. There was at that time uh, the Kisan, Kisan uh, uh, Mela, which was held twice, and his all his leftist friends had said, you must come, Ipta people had performed over there. And he used to do sketching over there. He made this painting of the Rajasthani laborers. But he feels with this painting, he had moved a step forward in, uh, in understanding the volume that he sought in his images of women. The Bengal famine in 1943. Three Harijan girls waiting outside the temple, begging and waiting for food. He experimented with various other styles and this was one of them. His watercolors were, uh, these are in the collection of uh, Sushila Gore. This particular watercolor was given in Lahore to his student for, uh, called Shanti Mayadas then, and whose daughter is a good friend of uh, Nazish Atullah, and it is Nazish who sent me this photograph in the last couple of weeks. They used to go every summer to uh, Kashmir. Many people went and he used to do many watercolors there. This was 1946 and the, 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 the troubled sound of uh, partition had started doing the rounds. And this is the last painting watercolor that he did in Kashmir. Again, in the uh, collection of Sushi Another style that he experimented with while, while the, while the uh, uh, World War II was happening. And he experimented with this cubo futuristic figuration. In Dianans, in the, and then in the, in the picture, what he shows is the laborers and behind them is the capitalist with the pot of gold and a danda in his hand uh, being the oppressor. In 
it so happened that he was asked by Hal Bettman to go to the studio of the, 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 the English army to paint po uh, posters for them. And it would not be a good idea to refuse to do so. So he does go into the studio of the uh, uh, poster makers of the English army and he's made these posters for them. But he's very uncomfortable. And uh, he finds uh, uh, affairs and affairs also over there as the editor of a journal. Both of them are very uncomfortable with the way they, uh, they, they have been drawn into this uh, situation. And then he has a little quarrel with the head uh, painter of the studio, who was an Englishman, and quietly slips out of the, uh, this situation. These are some of the sculptures that he had made. This is the last uh, drawing that he made in the regal building, whose owner was a Hindu and who had hired Akalis to protect the building. He draws one of those men into the studio and does a quick sketch. And he writes on the bottom, that this is the last drawing in the regal building studio, Lahore, 1947, July. Now is the partition. While they are preparing to leave, people have some people have collected at Kushwan Singh's house, and one Azim Hussain said he would throw in his lot on the side of secular India. For me, Sanya says, it was not the question of secularism or theocracy, but the place I had learned to love in two decades through work, play, and friendship. It was Nahor that mattered. At such a time of anxiety and decision, one day at the dead of night, a friend of ours, Mrs. Sabine, knocked at our door and held out two air tickets to Delhi. She said, Shahaleen is burning to ashes. We cannot leave till we have some news of our relatives living there. I have the car and the driver and the curfew passes with me. Go to Walton Airfield immediately. And there is no time to lose, which is what they did. This is the volume two of the vertical agreement. Now is the settling in Delhi and rebuilding a new life they landed at my grandmother's place in Havelock Square as my grandfather was, uh, uh, was serving, was a civil servant in the British government. And these were the quarters that were there in Delhi that uh, they, they came to in winters and went up to Simla uh, in the summers. During this time, he uh, has gone, uh, he and Snehlata have also gone back to Lahore to collect things they had left behind, uh, very, very, very little of which they were able to bring back. And he says, bewildered and dazed, I remained in a kind of animated suspension. Had I really arrived at the point of no return to my home and studio? Would an artist remain free from the events affecting the destiny of the people? I believe some of my work in this period reflected my mood. He had sent one of the canvases he painted at that time to Calcutta for an exhibition, but Suravarti, who was the chief minister at that time, had it removed because it was, he didn't like it. In, when in Delhi, his uh, ex-student from Lahore, uh, Swastantrata Prakash, had uh, uh, given him, uh, asked him, requested him to, to, uh, had requested him to, uh, to, to paint the interior of a stall that she was, uh, had been asked to decorate for the Gwalier's, Gwalier uh, potteries. He had no, uh, he didn't have any way of earning a living. And so he takes up that assignment from with her and he says, Almost the whole day on my feet, I filled in the required spaces with murals and with a hundred rupees bill in my pocket, walked back to my Bhattari digs. I was joyful in my heart for the fatigue of the day, not for the trifle in money, but for the realization, in fact, that we artists made a lot of fuss about our being creative and different. The experience of the day's labor to earn my wages 
brought to light the oneness of other craftsmen with me. We were all craftsmen first before anything else. He has been attending the uh, Gandhi's uh, meetings at the Billa, Billa House and he does sketches of Gandhi in that period. He, he says, I began sketching at the prayer meetings, asked his secretary for permission to sketch Gandhiji from life outside the meeting house. He told me a day later that I could do so when Gandhiji would be resting. I went prepared with my sketchbook and saw him seated with writing material in hand. Hardly had I begun when he looked at me and like a naughty boy, he stretched himself and turned his face away. He paints this after Gandhi's death and he calls it the way to peace. You can see the bullet wound on his chest. They had not been registering themselves as refugees because they were not happy with the idea that they're refugees in their own land. Uh, uh, Snehlata had been registering the refugees in the Kingsway camp, but they, they hadn't registered themselves. And then on the advice of friends that you must do so, they did. And it was in 1948, having become a displaced person for nearly a year, this was, the, he gets, uh, 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 Randhava uh, makes it possible for him to have a, a studio in the gold market. And he says, uh, if this was the first time I saw a flicker of light behind the clouds. Delhi Shilpi Chakra is made by a collective uh, of artists who have now come to settle from many parts of the country in Delhi. These are the members of the early members of the Delhi Shilpi Chakra. and more joined later. They had they made a manifesto. They used to uh, meet in the parks, they used to meet in some college premises, or they would meet at the gold market, which became eventually uh, their official address. In the manifesto, he says, in our manifesto, we declared that art and culture belong to all people and not only to the fortunate few that the artist had a role in bringing the message of the creative art nearer to the people and that in the developed awareness among the masses lay the interest of the artist for his own good. The artist is not a parasite of the society, nor was the entertainer of the way to be. In the meanwhile, he has developed a friendship with Indira Gandhi. And uh, it was Indira Gandhi who had uh, given him his first commission of the AICC convention in Delhi. He uh, draws in uh, Kulkarni and Dinkar Kaushik uh, to help him with that commission. And the subject chosen for the mural at that, at that uh, site was the Indian people. The peasant, laborer, and villagers seem to have pro prominence in our design. A number of congressmen visited us to watch the progress. Ananta Sayanam Ayanga, the speaker of the assembly, was one of them, who did not quite appreciate our art style of contemporary Indian. He quoted from Shilpa Shastra and recited the description of Gauri from Kumara Sambhav and left. Padmaja Naidu and Nidhira Gandhi came more often, not always to watch the progress, but were interested in art as such. Padmaja would even dip a brush in the pot of paint and draw a line here and there on the surface with such delight. At the end, we were far more delighted to receive a check signed by Jawaharlal Nehru himself. The mural, however, was destroyed mysteriously by fire, luckily at the end of the AICC session. The next, uh, these three musketeers decide that they'll work together now. And the next commission was brought in by K.S. Kulkani. It was the Imperial British crown on top of the Parliament House and Rashtrapati Bhavan would be replaced by the Ashoka Pillar State Emblem cast in bronze. We were required to the key, prepare the key model, replicas of which would then be mounted on the domes of all the government buildings. We dreamed of becoming rich. 
Kaushik arranged for us to work in the compound of the house of Acharya Kripalani. The three of us began to work on the four faces of the Sarnath lion. Soon I discovered to my great dismay that the four heads of lion were as different as my head was from that of Kaushik and that of Kulkarni. In fact, they resembled more to the cat, maybe the dog, than highly stylized lion heads of Ashoka Pillar. However, we were able to reconcile the deviations in the end. And in the end, the Kolhatkar foundry at Baroda made most of the money. Delhi Shilpi Chakra uh, has been formed. And uh, at that time, uh, the, 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 the effect of, uh, they had decided that the effect of the art, uh, they, they should have an art gallery, which they can't find any place. So it is in the Masonic Lodge that they hold all their uh, exhibitions. And they think that in effect, the art gallery should serve the dual purpose of educating public opinion on art and provide a means towards the artist's economic self-sufficiency. Art dealers are valued institutions in the Western world, but it has its shortcomings in the fact that uh, reputed dealers are in a position to manipulate and set a fashion to further their commercial interests. Dealers are known to have exploited any current art situation, created an artificial demand and supply of an art style and to have even made an unmade for painter at their own sweet will. The art gallery aims to serve the purpose of a link between art and the people. Eventually, uh, Bhumimal, from whom they had bought their paints and canvases, etc., offers them the, the mezzanine uh, floor of the Bhumimal premises and could not face. Ram Babu saw our plight and understood the situation. He told me good humoredly, Sanya Sahib, doing business is not your cup of tea. Let me employ someone who shall do the job and look after the artist's interest. The man employed did the job and looked after his own interest. So the artist could survive. In the meanwhile, while uh, at the uh, gold market studio where I would be taken, uh, Baba decided to do a portrait of me, and I used to spend my time over there studying and making little tree drawings, which he included in the composition of the painting. Of the painting, this painting became an iconic uh, image for time to come, long time to come. From Gold Market to Shankar Market, it was set up. They finally get an allotment in the Shankar Market. Sanya says, after all, does not art belong to the marketplace in modern civilization? 19 uh, Shankar Market became an alive art center and meeting place of minds. Some of his works in Delhi, Sanya's sculptures of fellow artists. Fellow artist sculptures of Sanya and also drawings, Jatin Das is one. Abu, another, and my Russian artist when he had the exhibition, USSR. Then he starts what he calls his episode of headhunting. And he says that one way of getting myself involved in professional work to keep my soul alive and the booty afloat was to seek sittings of persons prominent in people's eyes. I thought I was good in making portrait sculpture and, joined, and, and enjoyed making it. It has been a traditional practice in the West for patrons to seek the artist and the artist to search out a sitter of some eminence. For myself, I have indulged in the practice of choosing faces on the streets and solicited the favor of the owners of the faces to sit for me, needless to say, without expecting any compensation in return. On the contrary, I had to compensate my sitter for obliging me by pushing a few coins in their hands. Earlier, he used to make sculptures of Maharajas and dignitaries in, in Lahore to sustain his studio in the, in, the, in the regal building. But in Delhi, he doesn't have the luxury to do that. Eventually, he, he gets a commission to uh, make a bust of Gandhi, to, to, uh, which is to be presented to 
uh, the palace of uh, to the uh, to the palace of uh, to the palace of uh, peace at the Hague. Uh, Jawaharlal Nehru had been looking around for for an image maker or sculptor, had not approved of many, and eventually approved uh, Sanyal's sculpture piece, and that was then cast in bronze and sent to sent to uh, sent to the Hague, and it sits in the Hague today. Because he had registered himself as a refugee, he is now given an allotment in a colony made by the government for refugees in Nizamuddin. And he is very happy because he's surrounded by beautiful monuments. He joins the Delhi Polytechnic Art Department, which was in the old St. Stephen's College at Kashmiri Gate. In this uh, building and in, and in this situation when he is the uh, he becomes the, first as a teacher and then became, becomes a principal. He introduces many new things. Uh, as prin principal, he changed the curriculum, made, made it more interactive. He wanted artists to work in the college itself so the students get to see an artist at work. He started exhibition gallery in the college and he, uh, there was at one time an upgradation of the polytechnic but art department was not a part of that. And he offered to resign unless it was upgraded. Eventually it was. There is a quote, the status quo of my department continued, but my colleagues and I worked towards making the school an active organ of the cultural ethos of the capital. I extended the modest facilities of the gallery of the institution to MF Hussein to hold the first ever exhibition of his works in Delhi. It was followed by an exhibition of Kulkarni's Khajurao drawings and many other uh, exhibitions were held thereafter. He joins the Lalit Kala Academy. The Lalit Kala Academy has been, uh, uh, it is my Kubi, uh, Kabi who had uh, chased the idea of the academies and the building of the Rabindra Bhavan. And when uh, Sanya joins the Lalit Kala, he organizes to do uh, many, many things at the uh, at the academy, and one one that he he brought brought about the regional academies, then the exchange of exhibitions with other countries, then the starting of the triennale, and this, uh, the event that he was most uh, 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 emotionally connected to was trying to turn the Vishnutari Malja into studios, which uh, where the artists could, could have enough space to work and store their work, but it never happened. What happened was eventually was the Gadi Studios that, which was helmed by Shankar Chaudhary. We had, we come to this stage where the Woodland Society has been made. And this is where Nora was in Andretta, the village of Andretta, and she wanted to make the Woodland Society. Eventually the society was made and uh, 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 Sanyal was the secretary uh, while Nora was the president. She dies very soon thereafter. And many artists, well-known artists, uh, build their studios over there, Ram Kumar, Paramjit and others who were there at that time. But many artists are not able to make their studios and therefore it was decided to make the Nora Center for Arts. And this was a, a made by Mud and it was designed by the, uh, this is the house of Nora herself. She had made it with her own hands. But this was the uh, uh, center that has been made and still is uh, caters to artists, uh, a mud building designed by the KT Ravindran Studio. Travels were uh, his, his uh, forte. He has been asked to take a very a big and uh, important ex exhibition of Indian art to the East European countries, which extends to the USSR. And Gade is a vegetarian, has a hard time, but uh, Sanya uh, loves that whole travel. And while he is in Bulgaria at that time, his 
fingers are itching to touch clay and he requests the artist whether he can make a bust of him, which he agrees to. And this is the bust of the Bulgarian artist. They, did, they have traveled for one whole year from country to country when they returned back to India. His travels in, in India itself are adventurous. And this is uh, uh, during a trek in Spiti Valley too. So, uh, just before the Chinese inv invasion, there to save the artifacts in the, in the Tabu and the monasteries. And to arrive there, they are, uh, uh, had to travel in all sorts of ways. And Sanyal is the bravest of them all, who, who does whatever is required of him. After that, he is also called to the USA in response to the fact, and this is the Cold War period, that he had traveled the USSR. So in that travel, he, uh, 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 he, he is being taken all over the USA to uh, view museums, to view artist studios, to view uh, educational institutions. And in New, York, in New York at that time, the construction of the Guggenheim Museum is there, designed by Frank Lloyd Wright, which he thinks is an upside down birthday cake. He goes, then he is requested to come and revisit Lahore. Many artists had been coming from Lahore and the Mayo College of Art who came and would, would inevitably want to meet Sanyal. He went to Lahore and the old easel that he had in Lahore, he had given to his uh, student Anwar Ali, who is the father of the artist architect Ajaz Anwar. And this picture of his easel was sent to me only last week. In Lahore itself, he sits with the artists and they enjoy their, 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 uh, the, the, the community of the artists and uh, are, are, are very, you can see that he's very happy being with them. There is a uh, very happy incident that happens while he is in, in uh, Lahore. And that is, he goes to the Mayo College of Art where an old man is uh, sitting in the courtyard. And in the courtyard, he uh, looks penetratingly at Sanyal and says, I know this man. And he turns out to be the Gama Pahlwan, the modeler, my model, that he had first engaged with in Mayo School of Art. Also, he describes that he, there was, uh, uh, whether anybody has seen uh, sculptures and he describes the sculpture and one of the uh, people at the Lahore Museum uh, say, I think I have seen something of this kind and he takes him to the uh, first floor and uh, there behold, Lo and behold, there is a sack. And when he opens the sack, there are 14 pieces of his sculpture there, including Nora Richards. He cannot take them back with him because of the political situation. But four artists in, uh, in Lahore, offered to make rubber molds and send it back uh, through somebody or the other to India. And that happens to be the ambassador's wife who brings it in her luggage from Lahore to Delhi. And those four artists, four uh, busts that he had, ha, has got back was Nora Richards, uh, Ajoy Ghosh, uh, the cobbler, fourth one I can't remember. This is at the Karachi airport when he is coming back to India. The artworks of P.C. Sanyal done in Delhi. The nude has an honored place in Western art, not necessarily for the sake of nudity, but for the nobility of form. Uh, to me, the great figure of our woman is more suggestive aesthetically of the formal beauty of the female physique. 
his uh, his feel for volume grows in his paintings. This is a departure to, I think it is more akin to the famine and the despair and the despondency and the unemployment in, as seen while he's in Delhi. These are portraits that he has made. On the left is my daughter, pencil on paper, when she was just one. And this is a, a portrait of Snehlata Sanyal, uh, which she hated because she felt that it was just too formal. The last portrait of Justice Mishra he made when his eyesight was failing, but he insisted on making this because Sudarshan Mishra, his, his uh, son, who happened also to be the student of Snehlata Sanyal here in Delhi, had wanted him to do, and Sanyal was a friend of Justice Mishra, and out more out of memory than anything else, he makes this portrait. His fondness for animals has always been. The whimsicality of his, of his uh, imagination is seen clearly in these lithographs. Where? Manjit Baba used to take him to his studio early in the morning and drop him in the evening. And it's in his studio that he did these lithographs. He turned the sketch into a watercolor, but he changed the gender. There was a phase when he drew the subject of a scarecrow just obsessed him. Also, he had done many, many self-portraits and uh, these self-portraits of his were more as a comment on what was happening around than necessarily himself. And they were signifiers of changing sociological times and himself as the target of his own puns, verbally and as image. He is the scapegoat himself. And this was a homage to Rodin, the thinker. I don't know what he was thinking. So Bhavesh and Snehalata, this is the man that he really was, ready to socialize, ready to pun, ready to crack a joke. And I, I like to remember him like this. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry I've taken so long. Well, this is fantastic.
fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> you know, the historians, students, curators, onlookers, art collector, I wish they've seen this and maybe it should be available in the YouTube. People are more concerned about artists who are in the market. But Bhavazda lived a, a full life as an artist in many ways. Uh, Assam, Calcutta, Lahore, you know, and academy, setting up art school. I remember Paranjit, etc., where his students at the Polytechnic. And as I mentioned, I, although I was much, much younger, it was like my grandfather, but we were very good friends. We went together to many places. And he had a fantastic sense of humor. Even his paintings have a sense of humor. You know, have you marked that? You know? That is what I was trying to bring out. Yeah. <laughs> Amongst all the other points. <laughs> yeah. No, lovely. I have, you know, I, uh, I, I don't think he's gone. He's like, you know, while we're talking about him, as if I'll see him in the evening, you know. So, beautiful time. I remember Pranath Magoy's Nizamuddin West, you know. <laughs> Shankuda, Pradosh Das Gupta, all that used to meet. And uh, it's a fantastic journey he yeah. had. The colonial period, the partition, setting up. I mean, this is amazing. It's, it's a rare phenomenon in one person who has gone through all this. Hundred, and, li hundred years of art making. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And uh, research scholar uh, should work on it. There's so much, you know, embedded in your presentation. Uh, each, there each is much, much more in the books. Yes, in the yes, yes. I don't even have touched the That's tip right. of the iceberg. Say in Lahore days, in Calcutta. You see, because uh, um, Jesus School of Art, Madras, and Calcutta, these three art schools were born almost at the same time by the colonial period. So he had, frankly, lived many lives and on his journey which is extraordinary for uh, today's scholar to find out how the contemporary Indian art uh, traveled. Wonderful. Thank you, Amba. Thank you. We're very grateful. For giving me the opportunity to read the autobiographies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, while we're talking, uh, thoughts coming to my mind that I wish we can make gold market his museum. And we can write... Uh, coming down. It's been demolished. Oh. Uh, oh, it's been it's been broken down. It is in the core in the I mean it's in the in the way of being I mean it is being broken down. We can still take it out. Well I hope we can. Okay. Now let's have others with something to say or contribute to the discussion. If there any but, questions, please feel free to ask Ulam Bhai, any of you who would like to say, comment or ask. Can't hear you, uh, Gulam. Unmute yourself. Uh, are these volumes in Bengali or in English? He first wrote it in Bengali and then he himself translated it to English. Are they published? They are published. It's with the NGMA. The NGMA has published it. Okay. Anjali Sen, Anjali Sen is the godmother of this publication. Okay, okay. I remember that. Yes. Well, it was very instructive because there are lots of things that I did not know. So thank you for that. And uh, it was also very evocative of the time, you know, and the periods that you mentioned. Some of the periods that I did not know because it was before me. Uh -huh. But there are wonderful things that were happening. I, I would like to 
read or know more about it. I knew him as an institution builder, you know, and then we had a lot of connections. But uh, I, this was lovely to hear you speaking. Mm -hmm. I do wish, I do wish, sorry, uh, criticism yes. that I've spoken about your mother too. I know, but you know, the Kulam, there was so much I could not cover. And even while doing this presentation, I just skipped whole portions because it was so late. Yeah, I can imagine. There was a lot of that. But someday you should do it. Someday, yes. Sir. Something on it. Because there's something, I know very little about her. Actually, uh, yeah. I knew him, but I didn't know your mother. And I've heard so many things about from my dear wife who is sitting next to me <laughs> and all of that. Someday you should do that. Always. Thank you, Amma. Thank you. Thank you, Guna. Any other questions anyone else would like to ask? It's very late actually, so probably. Oh, and there's definitely a book that should definitely come out from you on, the, on this, with his works and you know, for others to know about it. Yeah, well, I would suggest that do anybody who's really interested do get the copies from the NGMA bookstore. Definitely. Yeah. Anybody yeah. else would like to contribute or comment or ask questions? I think we've run out of time. Thank you very much uh, for doing this for us. Uh, and I, this will be available online on YouTube uh, from tomorrow morning. And any of you who missed out, please feel free to um, hear it. And thank you again for doing this. On every second Saturday of the month, uh, we have a lecture like this. Uh, some of the forthcoming lectures will be by Amal Alana on Ibrahim al Kazi, on Monisha Ahmed on the nomadic textiles of Ladakh, and quite a few more in the offering. Thank you very much and see you all soon. And thank you again, Ambassador for this. Thank you. Bye-bye. And thank you very much. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Bye. Bye. It's like yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I know it feels <laughs> like yesterday. Even when I read it, it feels like yesterday. Nostalgic memories. <laughs> all the best, all the best. Take care.